Hey everyone, welcome back to Winterfell Camp, me live from the woods. It is Monday, uh, I guess that's April, I was going to say August, uh, not yet, April 29th. Um, it was August 29th, I'd be sitting in Sable Beach, <laughs> the campground. Anyways, uh, I was to call the, uh, the garage in Montreal regarding the bus first thing this morning. I did and spoke to Brendan and very impressed with Brendan. He was very nice, uh, very polite on the phone. Um, he let me explain what had happened and everything. So I gave him as much information as I possibly could, which is always a good thing when you're talking to the guy that's in charge of the mechanics and they have to figure out what's going on. And of course, shortening that process is cheaper for me and better for him because um, uh, two things I did. One is because I looked around his yard and his yard was full. I mean, full. <laughs> I mean, wickedly full. So uh, I told him, listen, I'm in no hurry. I'm home. I have a vehicle. The, there's no hurry to get the bus back here or anything like that. Take you guys time, whatever you got to do. He was so happy to hear that. And I'm like, brother, I drove trucks all my life. You're a truck center. I can see your yard is like, holy crap, full. So it's like, take your time, do what you got to do. And uh, don't worry about me too much. The bus doesn't need to be here. So anyways, uh, so he was really happy to hear that. I didn't hear back from him today, so I'm assuming it didn't get pulled in the garage because he told me he would call me, like they would diagnose it and then call me before they do any work on it. So anyway, that's uh, things as of uh, 10 to 7 p.m. tonight. Um, I haven't uh, obviously I haven't heard from them. They would be long closed now. I expect they close I actually I don't even know what close day time they close on a weekday uh, Like Friday they closed at 4. I kind of doubt they close at 4 on the other days likely they're open till 6 That seems that's pretty much tradition with the truck centers. It depends. I don't know I don't know his shop at all. So I'm glad I'm getting to know it because um, So far the two fellas I've spoke there are like wow really impressive people. So anyway Glad it broke down where it did. I lucked out and found a good tow truck company. And uh, JC, speaking to you, brother, if you ever see this. And uh, and he's from Uni Towing. Actually, I'm going to give these guys both credit because so far they've been really good to me. So they were really helpful. And I know that's their job, but like people go above and beyond. And JC certainly did. Um, yeah, he, he works for, what's it called? So you English will have, well, you English, I'm, I'm English too, but um, uh, like in French, it's called Services Routier Uni Pro Limited. Um, so that's like Route Services Uni Pro. I have his card, which I think is in English and French. Um, so we'll see how, where's that nice card? There it is, Uni Pro. And this uh, shout out, well, JC is one of the drivers. I mean, they'd had a lot of trucks there. So, I mean, obviously he's not the only one. They had a nice office. The lady in the office was very helpful. And uh, they were the ones that got me, you know, over to their, uh, to the truck center that's close to their uh, towing yard, which is less than five minutes. And then these guys, in English, they're called Truck Masters Maintenance Center. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Gets, I guess I don't know if it gets too bright. And uh, that's Eric. He's the uh, his car. He's the general manager. He didn't work today. And uh, so Brendan was in. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming Brendan is the same thing. Like he's like a manager or something. Anyways, uh, like I said, they were both very nice to me. Very pleasant. Um, and like I said, Brendan was happy to hear I wasn't in any rush or anything like that. Not that he would have had to do it anyway. It's his, there. It's their show there, so they run it the way they want. But it's like I wanted to make sure he heard that, that I understand. I'm not some kind of little, you know, flower that needs everything fixed yesterday. It's like I'm not going anywhere. If I need to go somewhere, there's a pickup truck out front. Uh, you know? So... Um, They'll do what they got to do, and they'll let me know, and uh, everything will be just dandy. So, um, like I said, I've decided to sell the bus. I think what we're going to do is I'll sell it, 
get whatever good price I can get for it. Uh, and then uh, with True's help, I'm going to look for an RV uh, that's cheaper than what the bus is, so I have money left over to do any repairs or a safety check, whatever I need to do with whatever RV we come up with. So uh, with True's help, I'm not really going to have much of a problem safety-wise and everything because he'll go over it. He's very you know focused on making sure and uh, of course he's going to help me that's just the way he is and uh so yeah i'm kind of sad about it because i was like in the whole magic bus thing and all that but uh this bus isn't magic for me and uh, i'm not saying it's a bad bus it's not it's great wayne did a great job and i mean outside of this little problem it's been running great doing what it's supposed to so you guys are like well then why is he getting rid of it well, like I said, a few things I found out in Montreal. Um, one, I didn't like the way the diesel heater was working. Could have been partially the way I was doing. I haven't had a chance to, to deal with it, you know, and now it's not going to be cold enough for me to, to see what it really does. Um, but I'm not, I'm, I, overall, I'm not happy with the diesel heater. First of all, it's using electricity if you're running it overnight to stay warm in there. Uh, number two, I mean, outside of the wood stove. Um, um, it's noisy, you know, and when I go camping, I like it to be quiet, quiet. I think that's the whole point, right? So at least some of us, unless you're partying, but, um, no, I just, I'm not, I'm not, you know, and, 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 uh, the diesel motor, the same thing. And I'm not a Ford guy and this just goes to show me, and I'm not saying that a, 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 a Dodge, you know, uh, or Cummings, well, Cummings probably would have never quit on me. Now there, I'd be happy. If I had a Cummings motor in that bus, that would have been made, make, make me happy. But that's not the real issue. The issue is I don't really have a washroom in there or a shower, things like that. And that's all fine. I mean, hey, I mean, I'm a camper. I mean, I, I camped in tents, so I didn't have any showers or toilets in the tent. But then I was always going to campgrounds that had those facilities. So, but this I want to do a little different, obviously. I want to go across the country. I want to be able to boondock, you know, places. So, um, True has some ideas on that because uh, buying an RV without solar was kind of limiting to me. But, you know, he says like a couple of portable panels, a jackery, and a couple other little things. And he says, I can have you running just as good as you were in that bus and, and not have to be so reliant on buying something with solar already wired in and everything. And I'm like, well, that's true. And then true, like my friend's name is true. Um, the wood stove in the bus thing doesn't really make a difference to me either way. A wood stove might be unique for some people, but I mean, out here we grew up with wood stoves. So, um, and uh, believe me, as you get older, you start to go, boy, it'd be a lot easier just to flip the switch on the wall like my mother does, who has a beautiful wood stove in her house. But she's 82. So anyhow, um, so for me, I got the big buddy uh, heater. It's the, the fancy one, 4,000 BTU, 9,000 and 18,000 BTU. Yes, you can run it inside. It has an oxygen center. I run it. I've slept in an eight by eight ice hut that was sealed up really good, insulated really good. My buddy built it and he made that thing as tight and as warm as we could possibly make it. I slept in it with the big buddy running 24 seven in it and uh, never once had a carbon monoxide issue or oxygen issue. Now we, I mean, we opened the window a crack like, duh, you bring in fresh oxygen. It is burning oxygen, even though it's a ceramic style heater. But the heat that it kicks out for the easiness of the propane that you know you can uh, you can run a uh, with an extension thing you can run a 20 or a 30 pound puck you can run a hundred pound if you want to carry around a hundred pound tank with it or you can just run the little one pounds I don't use those they're a waste I just connect my 20 pound with a hose and then a special filter so it doesn't screw up anything on the on the uh, ceramic end so to put that in an RV it's safe and uh, um, it's not something that, uh, that like I said, the, the wood stove, okay, Goldie, you're shaking the whole table. She just jumped on the table. She never does that. They're really clingy, um, and they're not getting better here. I mean, uh, I woke up with them all curled up around me tight, tight, tight. I, like, not this is even unusual for them. So, uh, anyways... Um, I'm definitely not going to go back to Montreal at five or six or seven days in a row uh, if I go back at all. Um, I'm not sure. 
in my head where I'm at with all this. One thing I do know is that if I, wherever I go, I'm going to go for a couple of days and then acclimate the cats, just like I'm acclimating them to get into to come in the bus. They need to be acclimated so when I leave somewhere, because I haven't been anywhere. I mean, you know, for the last, especially, you know, since last summer in August was the last time I went anywhere with any in length of time. And I came back and they were okay, but I mean, this time it wasn't so good. And it might be partly too, because I'm, you know, unglued, I'm upset. You know, I'm not upset like angry or like, Ugh. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you know, this is not the time of year that I should be having to deal with this. I thought the bus was going to be better than it was. Um, again, I'm not going to say anything bad about the bus. Wayne did an excellent job, and believe me, he went from one end of this country, from north to south to east to west, in that bus. And I mean, the stickers are on the side to prove it, all over the United States. So, I mean, you know, he built something good. But it's just, it's, it's like 90% of what I need. And I'm missing that 10%. And I thought, well, the 10% isn't going to be a big deal. But the 10% is a bigger deal than I thought it was. Uh, at least for me at this age, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Wayne is in his early 40s. He only had the dog with him, Gus. And uh, so, I mean, and maybe a whole different mentality. So, like I say, um, I'm going to put it up for sale. I'm certain somebody's going to want it. People, uh, you know, there are people out there that, are younger than me maybe or have a different idea about things whatever it doesn't matter as long as they're happy at the end of the day and for me i will make sure i'm happy at the end of the day um this time i'm not going to do it alone like i said i'll have my friend true is a true expert well his, his name just has all kinds of ways of playing with it a true expert my friend true so and he's always true to his word you know which he is so anyways true if you see this i'm not making fun you know that brother so um, I told him finally, I had told uh, my friend Amy that runs the grocery store in uh, Lanark that uh, if I were to have a son, True would be the kind of son I would want. So anyways, uh, that's about it. There's really nothing else to tell you guys. Um, I think I might do a Voice in the Bush video because I just listened to some idiot named Ryan Long that claims he's Canadian and he's saying all kinds of bullshit on Jimmy Dore's show about Canada um, that it's from a city at point of view. And I, I have to remind you folks, okay, people from Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Quebec City, these places, they don't represent the real views of real Canadians. First of all, they're not the majority of Canada. Rural Canada is the majority. We're a country of 40 million people that goes from Newfoundland to Vancouver Island, okay, north up to the Arctic Circle, and then of course, as far south uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the PD Island and Lake Erie, which is, you know, close to the United States. I mean, so, you know, we're a very, very, a very big country with not many people in it comparatively and a very variety country. And certainly the city, it's Toronto, etc., do not speak for the majority of Canada. So when you people hear news outside of Canada, um, you might want to take it with a very big, uh, you know, uh, um, big, uh, you know, doubt to what you're hearing. Just the same as, you know, if you listen to CNN, you might want to take that with a, uh, with, uh, with some very big, uh, okay, I'm checking these things out. Um, yes, we have a leader that no one wants, and it doesn't matter whether you're conservative, liberal, NDP, Trudeau is, uh, he's finished here. And uh, he will try and hang on for another two years. Unfortunately, the NDP, uh, Jagmeet Singh, is supporting him. The thing is, the NDP and Jagmeet Singh, in particular, he knows he will never be prime minister. Not in this time and age. Canada is not ready for uh, an East Indian prime minister. Nothing against East Indians. It's a mistake that he doesn't become prime minister because I think Jagmeet would do a good job. Um, although the woke thing and everything is also polluting the NDP. Pierre Polliver is a fraud from the word go. He's not a true conservative. He's not a liberal, um, but uh, he's a fraud. And he's going to be no better than Trudeau. And if you think the woke stuff is going to end with the likes of Polliver, it's not. OK, um, the woke people certainly do not represent the majority of views in Canada. See, I need to be doing this. I'm going to separate this. I'm going to see what time I finish the other one. Um, 
Anyways, uh, let's not get into it. I'm going to end this right now about the politics part. I was just watching this guy on the Jimmy Dore show, and I'm listening to him, and he's just running shit to get on Jimmy Dore because Jimmy Dore is a sucker for hitting on Canada. And uh, I'll say something to you Americans, and I'm half American, so I can say this, is that mind your fucking business. I think you people have enough of your problems, okay, without starting to talk about ours up here. Okay, and what you're seeing and hearing from these people, like this guy that runs his mouth podcast, Ryan Long, whatever, does not re represent the majority of Canada. Okay, on either side of the coin. Okay, because there's a lot of people that do support Trudeau out there. He was elected twice. Do I agree with these people? No. Okay, do I agree with the other side? No. Okay, people that watch Jimmy Dore's show in general don't support Republicans or uh, Democrats or whatever, whatever. They think for themselves, independent kind of thinking. There's a lot more of us in the rural Canadians because out here we have it everything. But the woke stuff, Ottawa Valley, we're called, somebody said we're like, we're like racist out here or something. Not, not on this show. See, I'm getting into, the, into it again. Um, I, okay. All I got to say is, Americans, don't take what you're hearing from the likes of the Jimmy Dore show or other stuff without talking to actual Canadians and try and talk to Canadians outside of the cities because the mentality of the cities does not represent the majority of Canada. And you'll be very surprised to know that most of these cityites are people from the country that move there. And then the cityites that are born, they come out here, they last a year, and then they go back home, which is like, why? The other thing is, if you don't like Canada, there's a border. Head to her. You'll get into Canada or in the United States. Look at he split. They can't keep people out of uh, from South America or Mexico coming across the border. Well, what do you think is going to happen here? So you people can go. And all you people that don't like the Canadian system of things, which is flawed, but Send me all your deposits you get from the government every year. The carbon tax deposit we just got that was $150. Uh, I get GST rebates every three months. Uh, everybody all gets this. There's all you family out there that raises kids. You get baby bonus and everything. So all you Canadians that don't like any of that, I would like from now on that all this stuff that you hate about Canada, especially the money that you're taking and spending, hypocrites, you start sending it to me and you start sending it to other poor Canadians, okay? And then you can go down to the States, and good luck down there. Oh, and by the way, when you do go to the States, one of the first things you're going to want to do is buy a gun, okay? Okay? You don't really need one here, okay? Unless you're, like, living in the country, and you put food in your freezer, so you shoot a deer every year. Oh, that upset the woke people. All 50 of them, okay? They got the biggest fucking mouths but they don't represent the other 40 million people that live in this country, okay? So that's all I'm going to say on Lad from the Woods about this subject. So I'll end this in two minutes. Sorry that I brought up politics here, but I just, I listen to Jimmy Dore, and then I'm thinking about the shit I'm going through, and I'm like, you know what? I got to say something. So this is on my general channel. I have a thing called A Voice in the Bush that's specifically for politics and stuff, and I'll do something there, even though I rarely do anything there, because I just get like... Why am I bothering, man? Like, it doesn't matter. Anything I say isn't going to change anything. So go do your thing. And if people around you don't like it, well, they can go fuck themselves. And uh, I'll just continue. I've lived 61 years so far uh, and managed to do a lot of things. I'm an ex-biker, all this other bullshit. And uh, I'm still here. I'm still a thing. And there's nobody here at my front door saying I can't say something or do something or whatever. We have laws. I break them. I live with the responsibility of breaking them. I don't break them. Well, I still don't see anybody at my door, okay? Maybe in the city, I don't know, but out here, that's not happening, okay? So talk to other people, okay? Um, and like I said, we'll go back to the bus. I do intend to sell it. Um, I don't know the value or anything like that. True said he's going to help me with that. I will update you tomorrow if I hear from the garage. Um, as for everything else around here, all I'm doing is laundry and contemplating and watching YouTube videos and I watched the new Star Trek Discovery episode last night which took me to a different place so okay everyone so thank you for coming as always sorry again 
Hey, I'll be typical Canadian. Sorry, hey, for bringing up politics on this channel. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Biggest thing you can do. We're doing it. More and more people are signing up. If you want to help out with all my expenses, especially now, uh, paypal.com slash lad from the woods. And there's links down in the description for all that stuff anyways. Okay? So be good, everyone. Be good to your fellow human. Uh, and uh, peace. Live long and prosper, just like Spock says, and it means good for everybody. Bye-bye.